Bridge, um, tell us a little bit about what toxic leadership means to you and what you've understood from your year's break journey and coming into the new style of working. Mm. Toxic leadership. It's, it's a problem um, all across New Zealand, across yeah. many different industries. It's not unique to the construction industry. Yeah. Um, what, we, what I've experienced as toxic leadership is um, bullying. Yeah. Uh, it's creating, uh, not managing your team well, creating a lot of pressure in the team. Unnecessary stress. Unnecessary stress. Yeah. Uh, it's not being clear with what you're doing. It's not being inspirational. It's um, it's not taking ownership of your own actions as a leader. It's not being authentic. It's being you know inauthentic and not being a real person. Yeah. Um, these are all traits of toxic leadership. I found. Yeah, but that's that clearly isn't working. And it's clearly not working. So it's how would holistic wellness help create better leaders mm, in the industry? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'll I'll take it back to that year off year off yeah. <laughs> that I took. Don't um, take my year off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I, I took this this role of a general manager in this community based organization. Yeah. It started <clears throat> off with the co founder and myself, yep. and we grew the team to eight people. Right. The the hook here is that those eight people were all unpaid, including myself. So what were the what was the company doing? Can you give us a little bit of context? So on that? the holistic hub um, yep. was creating events and experiences, connecting community to wellness practitioners and wellness right. experiences. Um, so eight volunteer workers. Eight volunteer workers. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Nothing like a bit of a challenge. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, um, immediately, I mean, money is the biggest motivator for an employee. Exactly. You, you've just taken that out of the picture. Exactly. Cool. Exactly. So it was really like I went into this one-year challenge going, I really want to expand and deepen my leadership practices. Right. And I was served. <laughs> yep. I got served. Yeah. So, you know, you're working with eight volunteers, unpaid volunteers. None of them work in an office. We're all all the way across New Zealand. So it's full work from home situation. So hang on, you're disconnected. Mm -hmm. You're not being paid to do what you do. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you do what you do? Exactly. Exactly. So the new way of working or the way that worked for this particular scenario yeah. was, you know yourself, you've, it starts with the selection and recruitment. You've got to find the right people to do the job and you have to connect at a values-based level. You have to, especially in this scenario where there is no money, there is no financial gain. It's purely based on passion. It's purely based on purpose. And yeah. we have to be singular in our path forward and what we want to achieve and what we want to give back. The next step was really how do I motivate people in a day-to-day -day work environment that I don't see them? Um, and I can't really have a deep and meaningful conversation with people, you know, over the water cooler. Yeah. So it's actually about constructing time with individuals and actually really understanding a person at their core and right. understanding what's going on outside of this. Where are you at in your personal life? What's going on for you in your goals? Where do you want to go? What's your motivation? What are the things that you want to experience in life? And how do I then bring that back to work? Yeah. Once I understand that person, I understand their motivators. Right. And I understand what they need to extract from work for it to be meaningful and purposeful. Huge, huge wellness indicator yeah. for a person is if you're working towards your purpose. You are motivated. You get out of bed. You do the well, things. Then it doesn't really feel like work then, does it? Exactly. And it's that's just, what we all want. Yeah. That's what we all want at the end of the day. Not 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 sitting in traffic, Auckland traffic for Hell yeah. an hour and a half in the morning, an hour and a half in the evening. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was my biggest driver to go consultant. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I don't totally. Yeah, yeah. Totally. No, that's so that's really once you understand though. The, the people the key, key at, an, personal at an drivers. individual level, yeah. now you understand each of the building blocks in your team. And now you can understand how the team is best going to work together because you understand everybody's strengths. All right. you're doing as a leader is setting people up to succeed. 
you're allowing people to play to their strengths. And once people are playing to their strengths, your team just becomes complete. They complete themselves. Have you seen the movie 300? Yes. <laughs> just thought of that. Yeah. This is a great example, right? Mm-hmm. 300 soldiers yep. pushing over the entire, entire Persian army. Singular purpose. Singular purpose. Singular purpose. Yeah. Highly passionate. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Turn it on. You turn on people that way. Get people working in the same direction. What's different, though, about this, and this is the other aspect of the new way of leadership, yeah. is we've actually got to start moving away from creating teams and work towards creating community. The one thing that has come out of COVID is this need, this human need, fundamental need to belong, a sense of belonging. And that's what you get from community. So help me understand the difference for, for layman. What's the difference between a team and a community? Your you version of it. You think about the last corporate team that you were in. Yep. Yep. It's very siloed, even in a team environment. It was very, you know. Fragmented. Very fragmented. Nobody yeah. really knew each other at a personal level. Not very well. You maybe had like one work bestie, but that's about it. Uh, you didn't really know your manager. You didn't know their drivers. You didn't know their dreams and their goals and that sort of thing. Um, whereas at a community level, we know each other as people rather than colleagues. So it's actually knowing the whole person rather than just your work personality. So, so how do you create a community <clears throat> as a part to as, as a part to a team? Yeah. What? How, how do you do that? How do you? Yeah. How do you get to that transformation? Yes. So. I would call it psychological safety. Right. So this what is, is... What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, please. So psychological safety is, um, it's a place where a person feels safe to be their authentic self, their real self. Yeah. They trust the people that they're around. They feel like they can say things. They won't be judged for it. They feel like they are seen, heard, and valued. And so as a leader, that's one of your key jobs, you know, to to really enable people and empower people to live their passionate life and live their purpose. You've got to be able to create the space for them. You've got to be able to create the psychological safety. So in practice, that looks like having real life conversations yeah. with your employee. It's yeah. about having non-work related conversations. It's, it's really understanding what is going on for that person, where that person is, what are their goals? What are their drivers as an individual? And then helping them succeed. Okay. So take it back to a traditional environment, right? Yeah. So you, you get given a list of objectives, which is build a building. Yep. So you need a suite of people to do that. Mm -hmm. They have teams, which are all very siloed. Yep. Your project management team, your site management team, commercial team, your project controls, risk, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yep. So they all now have been have got clear defined purpose to achieve one common goal. Yep. What do you recommend we change in that structure to create a community? Because teams are what we've been used to working. Mm -hmm. Now we're creating this community. What does that look like? Yeah. I mean, you'll see it in the good site teams. You'll see it in the teams that if that that foreman <laughs> leaves, the people follow that foreman. Always happens You'll in New Zealand. Always happens. Always happens. Not happen always, in but it, it does it does happen quite, in the construction industry. Quite often. And you look at what is different between that team and your average team. These people socialize with each other. They have barbecues. They watch rugby together. They uh, their families know each other. Their kids play with each other. You know, there's this real sense of connection bond. Yeah. and bond and community that's what i mean yeah now thank you so much for your insights on that it's um, very insightful yeah especially on psychological <laughs> safety that's, that's something new for me it's huge it's yeah. such a huge topic at the yeah. moment yeah really it's it's like the buzzword at the moment yeah yeah cool. thanks for that bridge